I'm going to work through examples of drawing uh, light rays going through a lens and trying to interpret where the image will come out uh, from that from an object sitting in front of a lens and I'm going to work through three examples with you. Two of them will be with a convex lens and one of them will be with a concave lens. Remember when we st started drawing light rays there are three types of light rays to draw. The first light ray is one that always leaves an object sitting in front of a lens and comes in parallel to the center axis of the system. And number two is one that looks like it's coming from the focal length of the lens, so it will come out parallel. And number three is one that goes through the center axis. So let's first take an example of a convex lens where I've placed an object far away from the lens, let's say further away from the, the lens than the focal length. So such a lens, uh, if I take light ray number one and I bring it in parallel, that light ray should head toward the, f the other focal point and keep on going. Light ray number two has to look like it, for the lens, has to look like it's coming from the focal point. So I have to connect something coming from the tip of the object and go through the focal point and keep on going in the lens. I know that that one's going to come out parallel because either I can th interpret a focal point as the place where if light rays coming in from the right-hand side converge to or if I place an object there and, and think about this in reverse, it's, light uh, it's a place where if light is coming from it, I get a parallel beam out, just like we had with mirrors. So such a light ray that connects the tip of the object, goes through that focal point and comes into the lens, that one's going to come out parallel. Light ray number three is the one that always hits the center axis of the lens, and I draw it like that. And I draw it such that it's undeflected as it comes through the lens. That's because the two surfaces here and here at the point of the center axis are approximately parallel and a parallel slab of, of glass or plastic or whatever doesn't deflect or doesn't change the angle on the back side of the lens compared to the front side. So these light rays actually all come to a point and they do so right about here and that's where the image is going to be located. So if I were to do the same exercise for the base of this object and draw light rays um, coming into the lens they would all come back over here, but I won't, I won't go through that. I will just assure myself of that and um, I'll see that the, obj the object's image is now flipped upside down, so I'll know that the magnification here is a negative number. Its, its image is over here on the so-called real side of the lens, so I should imagine that the, the image distance is going to come out positive, excuse me, yes, positive. Um, and I can even see about roughly where the image is going to be. Um, it's a little bit further away from the, than the focal length. So that's one example. The second example I'd like to do is one in which the, the object is placed in front of a convex lens again, but it's placed very close to the, the convex lens itself. So let's imagine that it's inside. If this is the focal length, we place the object right there. And then we'll draw the same three rays one that comes into the lens parallel, well that parallel ray has to head toward the focal point. The second is one that appears to come from the focal point. Well, since the object's out in front of the focal point, I'm going to draw a little dotted line and imagine that it keeps on going. The light ray is coming up this angle and going out. And the third one is the one that again goes through the center axis. It's undeflected. And if I'm an observer over here, these light rays do not converge. They appear to converge if I'm looking back into the lens, and they appear to converge right there, but they never actually converge. This is called a virtual image, and you notice that its, um, its location does indeed come out over on the V side of the lens. It's an upright image, so it's in the same orientation as the object itself, and it actually appears to be an image that's larger than the object. So I would imagine that the magnification comes out to be a positive number and it's bigger than one and the image distance is less than zero because it's a, it's a virtual image. The last example I'd like to do is one with a concave lens and I'll look at it right here. Um, it turns out it doesn't really matter where I put the object, I'll place it right there. Um, it won't change the conclusions dramatically. If I draw three rays coming from uh, such an object into a concave lens, well, the parallel ray diverges out 
and looks like it's coming back from a, the focal length. Ray number two is one that um, should be heading toward a focal length, and so it's bent out and is running parallel. So it never actually meets with ray number one. Ray number three goes through the center axis and keeps on going undeflected. These rays, if I was an observer over here, they never converge. And so what I would imagine I'd see uh, if I were looking back into the lens is that the rays all appear to converge because I'm fooled. I don't realize that they're bending. I think they travel in straight lines. And they appear to converge right there. And I again learn that this is a, a virtual image because the image location is on the uh, the back side of the lens, it's on the so-called V side. It appears upright and it appears to be substantially shrunk compared to the original object itself. It turns out every image from a concave lens is a virtual image and um, its particular magnification, its size relative to the original object may change a little bit if I move this in or out, but it doesn't change that it's always going to be a virtual image. To contrast though, a concave lens is very different depending on whether I put the object inside the focal length or outside the focal length. And if you were looking at an object through a concave lens and move the concave lens uh, closer to or further away from the object, you might see a sudden transition where the image flips. It goes from being upside down to being upside right. So these are some examples of working with uh, ray tracing and trying to simply graph out what would happen when the image is formed by such a lens. And we'll continue to work both kinds of examples.